expiration dates are something that was created 100% by the food industry as a way to get us to throw away perfectly good food and then have to buy more to increase their bottom line. Let's chat about it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sutton's Days. If you're new here, my name is Lisa, and we are all about pantry preparedness. It is the best insurance that money can buy. And today, we're going to talk about expiration date management, because what I said at the beginning is partially true, not completely. Let's chat. First, we've got some basic rules for expiration slash best buy dates. They are different, okay? Expiration means like your sour cream is going to expire on or around the 15th of the month, and on the 17th, it's all curdled and it's horrible. That's an expiration date, okay? A best buy date is this tuna in this can is best consumed within this amount of time. After that, it's still safe to consume. However, it may lose some quality. There's the difference. Best buy versus expiration date. Expiration date means don't do it. Some of the ways to manage your best buy and expiration dates. That was the first one. Understand the difference between the two. Be able to recognize them on the products that you are buying. Next up is follow storage guidelines. Cool, dark, and dry. You know that for most stuff, right? But in the refrigerator or the freezer or wherever they recommend that you store it or how you store it, if there's not a recommendation on the label, there is the internet. It's a good time to start a notebook so that you're aware. But in your pantry for your dry storage, it's always cool, dark, and dry. Those are the best ways to do it. Always remember to rotate your stock first in, first out. Check out your food regularly. Remember to inspect what's in your pantry, in your refrigerator, and in your freezer. You want to catch freezer burn. You want to, you want to catch things that are at or beyond their expiration dates in the refrigerator and you want to check to make sure that all seals are good there's no buckled cans there's no lids off of your home can stuff and there's no infestation of any kind in your pantry be sure to check out what you have stored always trust your senses remember if it doesn't taste right if it doesn't look right if it doesn't smell right dime to a dollar says it's not right Always remember, better safe than sorry. When in doubt, throw it out. Familiarize yourself with common shelf lives. So if you've been here for a while, you know sugar is a forever food. Brown sugar, not so much. So familiarize yourself with the common shelf lives of the food that you store so that you can better track how long your food is good for. Understanding that expiration dates are not a, ooh, that's it. It's done. If you ever gotten a gallon of milk and it actually goes bad like two days before the date on the carton, but then you've had other gallons of milk that are actually still consumable two days after the date on the carton, they are a rough guesstimate of how long the product is going to be good. So it's good to be aware of how expiration dates work, but it's, it's better to rely on your senses to see whether or not it's actually any good. Don't throw out perfectly good milk just because the date says yesterday. It's still good. Consider environmental factors. So heat and humidity and light can degrade and shorten the, the life of your food. That's something to always keep into consideration when you are looking at purchasing food and stockpiling it. You have to keep in consideration the environmental quality that you're going to keep it in. If you live in Arizona and it gets to be 120 degrees, can you still can food if you don't have an air conditioner? Yes. Will it be good as long as somebody who has it in air conditioning? No. It's still good, maybe just not as long. You may have to check your seals a little bit more. You may have to look at the cans from the commercially bought stuff more. It's still doable. It's just maybe not in exactly the same way that it's doable for, say, somebody in Michigan. How do you handle expiration dates? Throw it in the comments section down below. Now I have 15 ways for you to develop an expiration date management system. It's super simple. It sounds more technical than it actually is. Don't be afraid of it. Let's jump in. Let's do this. First one is inventory tracking. I know, I know inventory is like a dirty word for some of you, right? But inventory is extremely necessary. So whether you're just starting your pantry or whether you're a few years into it, be sure to go through and inventory what you've got. Take a look at the dates, dust off the top of everything, right? And start your inventory system. The inventory system I recommend, 
Project Pantry. Yeah, the link is down below. It's an organizational system. It has meal planning. It has inventory. It has shopping lists. It has all the things that you could possibly need to keep track of your inventory. There's, it's not very wordy, you guys. It's, it's forms to fill out. It's a way to track everything. It's a hands-on organizational system in order to help you keep track of your inventory, make life a little easier. Links down below. First in, first out. We mentioned it already. If you bring new stuff in, put it behind the stuff that you have. Use your oldest food first. Very important. But I've worked so hard to put it up. Good. So, you've worked hard to put it up. That means you got it up there at the best price that you had, hopefully. And everything moving forward is probably going to be more expensive based off experience over the last four years, right? You want to go first in, first out. That way you're always using your oldest food first and you are saving money in the long run. Believe it or not, you are. Because whatever you bought at yesterday's prices is cheaper than what you're buying at today's prices. And today's prices are going to be cheaper than tomorrow's prices. So in addition to not only using the produce or the meat or whatever the case may be in an orderly fashion so that you're not using new stuff as opposed to old stuff, it also makes sure you rotate through it. It makes sure that you are getting the best quality and the best bang for your buck. Develop a labeling system. I have seen some amazing labeling systems, okay? I have literally three by five cards that I bend in half and put on the shelf. Um, I have created labels for some of my canning shelves. I make sure now that everything is labeled because I have a jar that I believe is pectin that I am not positive is pectin. Do I want to waste a batch of jam on something that's not pectin? No. So I'm going to sit there and stare at it until I figure it out. That's what you don't want to do. Even if you think you're going to remember, label it. Now, I do know people that use labeling using those colored coded dots that you use for like garage sales and stuff. Um, David, David does this and he's the one that introduced it to me. And so every year has a different color on it so that visually he can see I need to use this up because that is from two years ago or that is from last year. And don't use this one because that was done this year. Find a system that works for you and your brain and it'll make life a lot easier and you won't have that dreaded jar of, I think it's pectin, but I'm not sure. Plan a rotation schedule. Rotation schedules can happen at the same time that you're inventorying. When you go through an inventory, you can make sure that all of the older stuff is pulled up front and the newer stuff is in the back. Rotate through seasonally if, it's, if it works for your lifestyle because we eat seasonally most of the time. And so being able to pull forward the stuff that I know we're going to eat in this season but not touch until a later season helps me move things around also. So make sure that you are setting up some kind of rotation schedule, preferably while you're doing inventory because it's kind of a twofer. Regular inspections are very important. If you're not in your pantry every single day, if you have 400 things going on, three kids screaming, got to take care of this, got to take care of that, and a 40 plus hour work week, making time to just walk through and visually take a look, go up and down, make sure that you're not seeing anything like mice coming in or moths flying through, right? Make sure that you're not smelling anything unusual, like maybe a lid came unsealed. You want to do a visual inspection on a fairly regular basis. I do this pretty much daily. I just have a routine. I just automatically glance up and down all around. I pay attention to all the things and I know when something is not the way that I think it's supposed to be. So if you get used to making that a habit, it's what you do. And most moms will tell you they can juggle 14 things at the same time. So doing that visual glance as you're walking through is actually not too hard. Probably one of the more difficult things is to organize your pantry and to keep it organized. I'm guilty of this where it just comes, you know, it, it becomes a shop and drop situation. You pick it up, you put it in there, you'll get to it later. Later snakes up on you pretty quick. But the more organized your pantry is, the more that you put zones in your pantry so that this is where these products are, this is where those products are, the easier it is to be able to take a look at what you're missing, where issues may lie, what kind of problems may be coming down the pike. So having some kind of organized situation, even if you're in a small situation like an apartment where you're putting things in drawers or under your beds, make it a regular thing that you do to pull those out and take a look at them. I'd rather find it sooner than later because later is typically kind of gross. 
I know, I say this all the time, all the time, meal planning. Meal planning is imperative. It really, really is. It will save you time. It will save you money. You are not locked in. You can still be spontaneous. If you meal plan to the extent of, I'm going to have barbecued chicken with all of the fixings on this day, and you get to that day and you go, I don't want to do all that work, you still got the chicken that you have ready and available. So you could either actually meal plan the entire day or you could just say, we're going to have chicken for dinner that day and decide as you get closer to the day how you're going to use that chicken. Don't make it harder than it needs to be, but meal planning will help you go through your inventory without going out to McDonald's or the pizza place, right? You know what's in your pantry. You can meal plan around it so that you are spending like no money. I went to the grocery store recently. I got like two bags worth of things and it was $50. I'm going to find every possible way that I can to eat out of this pantry because that means I'm not spending money. How do I do that? I go in there, I look at what I've got, I look at my inventory, and I develop a plan for the week. Even if it is something as simple as I don't feel creative, I'm going to have chicken on Monday, I'm going to have beef on Tuesday, I'm going to have pork on Wednesday. That right there just took a lot of pressure off because I know now on Monday, I got to figure out something to do with the chicken. I can grill it. I can bake it. I can turn it into a soup or a casserole. There you go. Super simple. So it still leaves that spontaneity that some people seem to crave with meal planning. Um, but it takes a whole bunch of pressure off knowing this is what I have to focus on because I need to get this rotated out of my pantry. So meal planning. I know there are some people that are like, oh yeah, just give me a kitchen and I'll whip you up something totally awesome. And there are people that have to have a recipe that spells out every single step of the ingredient list. So I know different people manage it in different ways, but food is not something to be afraid of unless you store it really wrong and do crazy stuff, okay? But food is not something to be afraid of. Food is something to get innovative with. So if you get innovative with your ingredients, if you don't have pork for a recipe, try using chicken or beef if, and vice versa. If you don't have tomato sauce, try using an Alfredo sauce or creating a gravy. Find different ways to put some innovation into your recipes so that they're unique and they're different and they're fun and that gives you the creativity and possibly the spontaneity that you are looking for. Don't be afraid of your food. Find ways to be innovative with it. A lot of times you guys will see when I do cooking, I end up saying I'm taking a bunch of it to our neighbors, okay? If you are cooking or if you have a lot of extra stuff where all of a sudden your family's me you know menu has changed, their tastes have changed, and you don't like mandarin oranges anymore, See if one of your friends or your neighbors can use it and donate it to them. Donate it to the food bank. Donate it, give it away, make something with it and give it to them, okay? Nothing freaks my neighbors out more than me showing up with an apple pie because I have an itch to make an apple pie. I can't eat it, so I'm going to take it to my neighbors and have them gain the weight instead of me. Kind of works out well on all ends, right? When I make a recipe, sometimes they just get out of control and I've created enough food to last Phil and I for an entire week and we're not gonna eat the same thing for seven days. So I will take the little bit that we use and I will take it to my neighbors and say, here, dinner's on me. And nobody has ever turned me down. It's a great way to work through your stock if you have more than you thought you would need. Learning preservation techniques. A lot of you are here because of canning. We can, we dehydrate, some of us freeze dry, some of us buy freeze dry, some of us freeze. You know, there's different ways, different methods to food preservation. Taking the time to learn the proper way, the safe way to do it is really important and it will help you with stockpiling your pantry in the long term. Knowing that if you find a deal on mushrooms that you can put them in the dehydrator, you can put them in the freeze dryer, you can put them in the freezer, you can put them in jars, my preference. So Find all the preservation methods. Learn about all of the preservation methods. It doesn't mean you have to commit to doing all of them every single day, every single week. But knowing that you have the ability, regardless of what's going on, if you can take advantage of five cases of mushrooms for what would normally cost you two, then it would be a shame to not take advantage of it, to not dehydrate them, to not freeze them, to not can them, you know. 
find all the ways because having redundancy in your pantry is super important. And the only way to do that safely is to learn safe preservation methods. Bulk purchasing control. Buying in bulk is one of my favorite things to do. So when I can, I will compare the unit price, compare the per ounce price, and I will do that. But if you're not saving money at it or you're not saving time, which to me equates to money, then is it worth doing? No. You can wait and you can just buy a little bit at a time and stock that up. That makes a lot more sense and is easier to manage if it's not something that you go through and you're not saving money by buying in bulk. If you are not up for Project Pantry, which, by the way, is my favorite system for tracking, um, they do have digital tracking you know, apps and stuff out there. I don't use them. Um, my phone is a device that I feel that if anything were to happen to the grid, that would be a lot of lost information for me. So I prefer to have something that I write down. Yes, I can write it down and then put it on an Excel spreadsheet or I can write it down and put it into an app. I'm not into that much redundancy. I want one system for tracking my pantry that is my safeguard to let me know what's going on. However, they do have digital tracking. They have apps and stuff like that. Check out your app store and see what's available if that's more to your taste. Check this out because I think it's a brilliant idea. When you buy something in bulk or not in bulk, okay, you can set up alerts on your calendar to let you know that these items are going to be nearing their expiration or their best buy date. I think it is a great way to incorporate your digital calendar to let you know that this is coming up. So if I go out and I buy a case of tuna and I look at the date on it and it says that it's good for two years, then I can actually put it on my calendar to double check about a month beforehand to make sure that I have used up all of that tuna for that expiration date. I love this idea and I'm going to be so busy adding alerts to my calendar now. Education and awareness. If you've got somebody in the house that is not on top of the pantry items the way that you are, you're going to want to educate them to a certain extent. If you have to, grab a Sharpie and black out the expiration dates, okay? Because I know people who, when it gets near that expiration date, they throw out the food. That is such a waste. It's absolutely unnecessary. And if you're living with somebody who does that, there are ways to get around them. Educate them, make them aware, and if that doesn't work, find a way to hide the facts from them, okay? And just black out the dates because expiration dates and best buy dates are not a definitive throw it out, okay? That is a huge waste of money and time and food. We have 40% of the food purchased in this country going into landfills because people don't understand the longevity of it. Don't be one of those people. Last but not least, review it regularly. Review your pantry, review your inventory, review what's going on. You want to take a really good look and see what is actually working for you and what isn't. Like I use the mandarin oranges as an example. If you love mandarin oranges and so you went on a binge and you bought like two cases of them and like three months later you finding, I don't love them as much as I thought I did the day that I bought that, okay? That's something that you can review as you move along. Reviewing your pantry, what is moving in, what is moving out, and keeping track of it really helps you prevent any kind of food waste. It helps you manage what is coming into your pantry, especially if you are in a smaller house or conditions where you only have X amount of space to store stuff. Being able to review this and determine what is actually working for you will help you save money, save time, and not put good food in the landfill. Review your purchases, review your pantry, review how you're using it, and see what is changing and what is not. Sometimes you won't find any changes at all, and sometimes you'll be like, I bought too much or I didn't buy enough. And you want to be able to stay on top of that so that you can keep track of your expiration dates and what is working. Expiration dates and best buy dates are only basic suggestions. While we can put our tinfoil hats on and discuss a little bit about uh, the reason that they're all there, the initial implementation was for our benefit. What happens after that depends on which conspiracy theory you're listening to. If you want to check out more about storing things in your pantry long term, check out this video right here. And until next time, everybody, be safe.